You said, you know? You, you know what, you touched on something that I really have to say something. You mentioned about, as parents, we try to raise our kids on religious, you mentioned that word, and I think that's the problem. We need to do it on a relationship. Absolutely. Because, yeah, it's, you know, because it's, the whole Bible is about a king and a family of, and relationships. And I think that's one of the key things as parents, for even myself, it's a relationship that's going to make the difference. Not so much building it on religion, because it's about relationship. With the I see something up. in your story, Vivian. <laughs> yes. Uh, just how broken you were, uh, not even wanting to live anymore. You needed someone to mm. fight for you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a right. point that you make, Marva, in your book. Our kids need someone to fight for them, mm -hmm. to stand up for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're uh, feeling uh, alienated. They're feeling right. odd, weird. So, and Absolutely. that's why you hear that there's more um, them going into gangs, mm -hmm. belonging in community, that's a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. belonging community. Mm -hmm. They're going into destructive behavior because it's something they control, mm -hmm. whether it's cutting or doing things to their body, addictions, it's because these are outlets and ways to feel, to have control mm -hmm. over a life that is spinning out of control. And you hear this over and over Oof. again. And, and it's so sad because a lot of times, you know, as I work with teens, all they say, especially the young girls, they say, if only my father had said I was beautiful, That's if right. only my father had said he had loved me, mm -hmm. if only my mother would have taken me aside and, and taught me things about my own sexuality and body and value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not to, they say that, they're not to blame them, but if only I'd mm -hmm. heard that from them, I wouldn't have gone seeking it exactly. from right. other men and, and, and drinking and all mm -hmm. these other things. You know, it's so amazing. This morning, as Ely was doing our, my hair, our hairdresser, yeah. Ely, he was saying to me, what he says to his daughter is, lots of women out there are Barbies, but you're a princess. Because don't be a Barbie. Everybody plays with Barbie, whatever, right. but you're a princess. That's and so right. you deserve, not in a way, in a sense, he said, not of like looking for someone with money or like in, in a sense of exalting yourself, but in a sense of realizing that you are mm -hmm. special, yes. and that you have value and you need to find somebody who sees you as special and treats you with value and mm -hmm. that you could give the same respect back. Yes. Which right. I thought, wow, like That's putting right. that into a daughter. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A father Absolutely. saying that. A fa yeah. a fa exactly. Especially a father. Yes. Especially a father mm -hmm. saying that to a daughter. You know, we cannot really even begin to understand the value of that right. and, and the investment into that girl's life. And somebody saying life. that to you and not looking for something. Yes, exactly. you know, that's the point. It's, that's it's, unconditional. Exactly. it's unconditional. It's unconditional. Exactly. It's unconditional. So we're starting to talk strategies <laughs> here. <laughs> and, and that's the promise of this book. Uh, yes. Strategies yes. to restore teens and young yes. adults. And you make the point, Marva, that we prepare the way that's right for the Lord yes sounds like a John the Baptist line to me yes. we prepare the way for the Lord to come yes. and do what only he can do in these hearts absolutely and absolutely. we've kept Linda here because guess what <laughs> it has so much to do with prayer prayer absolutely I think um, there's two things for parents we have two uh, grown children and what the Lord really impressed upon me was that number one our responsibility is to model godly parenting, to model what it is to be a godly mother mm -hmm. and a godly father. And to that admit... That doesn't mean to squeeze them into your mold. No, no. no. Which Actually, is part of the problem. it's to release them into release their... In, them. In, to release them and to yeah. bless them into what their, you know, what their destiny is and That's who God right. has called them to be. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is to pray. Mm -hmm. uh, my heart is that my children would see me praying for them. When they leave for an important event, they say, Mom, would you pray for me? If they have a challenge at work, Mom, would you pray for me? Um, our daughter lives in South Carolina right now, and she will phone and say, Mom, you know, I'm having this struggle. Will you pray? My friends want you to pray. Will you pray for them? They want to know if you'll pray for them. And it becomes an understanding that we are modeling a relationship mm -hmm. with God, mm -hmm. and that when we're not there, they will have that same relationship with Him, and they will have access to Him through this communication called prayer. Yes. Well, so, yeah. yeah, and many people, I mean, even myself, the thing that got me through my troubled youth was I know my mom and dad were praying for me. That's right. I know that for many people they say, our mothers, our grandmothers, mm -hmm. our That's families, right. our churches were praying for us. And even though That's it took right. 10, 15 years for me to finally come full circle yes. back, it was the prayers. And it was, and even in, with me, there were moments where I would be going towards something that was evil and bad. Yes. And there would be something physically as I was stepping towards him or it. Yes. I could feel myself going, huh? yes. maybe I shouldn't do that. Oh, something was mm -hmm. strongly convicting me. And there were many times I would actually step back and go, maybe I shouldn't walk into that place. Maybe I shouldn't go with that guy. Like it was that 
physical, and I know mm -hmm. that was the prayers of people protecting me from that. Absolutely. Yeah, very and I can say the same thing, because I, Linda and I both had a similar <laughs> teenage rebellion. Yes. And I actually oh, used to be too. out in bars, and I used to hear mm. my name called all the time, yeah, like from too. far away. Like I used to hear, Cheryl, like that. And I would always be looking around, there'd be nobody, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, oh my goodness. You know what I mean? Right. And I know, I put myself in so many uh, dangerous situations as a youth, and nothing ever happened to me. And and I just know that's the prayer of my parents. Exactly. I know that I would not be sitting yes. on this couch today, mm -hmm. living this life, yes. if it weren't for my mom and my dad crying out to God, yes. and uh, all their friends, actually. It wasn't just them. <laughs> exactly. And you say that in your book, right? Not just yes. parents to pray for their kids, but as a community, we need Absolutely. to start praying for yeah. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, I love, Marva, your terms. You want us to keep become a hope keeper warrior, yes. and mm -hmm. we need hope keeper partners. Absolutely. Right. Hope keeper, because our young people have lost hope, many of them have lost hope yes. in themselves. Mm -hmm. yes. They don't believe that they can really make it through and transition into destiny and purpose. Mm -hmm. Now we are here as adults, <coughs> parents, pastors, leaders, grandmas, grandpas, aunties, uncles, That's or right. just those mm -hmm. in your community. You see a young person's life spinning out of control, start believing for that young person. Start believing that there is destiny and purpose in that young person. And prayer is your number one strategy in going before God to see that life turned around. Because as I say in the book, when our young people reach, our children reach certain ages, we've lost the opportunity yeah. to influence them directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're five and six years old and, anymore. And there's a difference between influence and authority. Yes. I think a lot of people tend to say, as authority, sometimes as your father, parents, as you know, yes. you know, teacher, I am demanding, I'm saying this because I said so. Yes. Because I have authority and you need to listen to me. Whereas so many times kids are saying, no, I want influence. influence. I want to see you influence. I want to watch yes. your life. Mm -hmm. I want to hear your words. I want to watch you know, how you walk and talk, see that it's integral mm -hmm. yes. and that you, and I, then that kind of influence is even yes. more powerful so, than position. Because absolutely. sometimes yes. we, we get that mixed up, that position and influence and yes. it, it's it's off and yes. kids see right through it. Teens right. see and right that, through it. And in that sense, the influence speaks higher than the authority. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I just want to ask mm -hmm. you something. For somebody that's listening, like a parent mm -hmm. who's been praying, you mentioned that, you know, you have your kids, you know, some of them are straight and they've been praying for years and yes. they believe in prayer but yet still like nothing is happening yes. mm -hmm. you know and they're just about you know what God like they want to give up like how would you like how would you encourage them to continue as how you're continuing mm -hmm. to pray don't it, give it, up. <laughs> don't give up don't it is when they want to feel like giving <laughs> yeah. up which is why the book is called keeping our hope alive okay. and it's not keeping your hope alive right it's collective <laughs> good yeah. that's good. where the hope mm -hmm. keeper partners come in you don't do it alone. You're yeah. not doing it alone. And don't try to do it alone. That's mm -hmm. the point. Um, and stay in there because it is a journey of faith. Mm -hmm. More is expression in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. um, I've already seen changes and I have witnesses that my prayers are being answered. And I'm continuing still in the trenches, believing not only for my children, but for others as well. Yes. And the beautiful we thing here is mm -hmm. that this waiting room, this pain yes. has not robbed you of the joy of the Lord, mm -hmm. of His purpose in and through you mm -hmm. every day, That's because right. you're keeping your focus on Him, you're being nurtured in Him, Absolutely. and with the encouragement of others. And you know, I need to say, 2006, Real Identity Discovery Ministries That's right. was born. That's, That's right. Marva's baby, and <laughs> it's, it's R I D M, R I D M, Redeem. That's correct.